What's going on guys, Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video and today we're going to be looking at opening up the Arcade 1 Up Control Panel and going over a couple of modification ideas. So I right now kind of just put the Arcade 1 Up into like a little closet that I have here. So um, definitely going to be taking apart the control panel today. Um, I got my buttons in from Game Room Solutions, I got my whole LED button set up. So, I'm just looking at it real quick, thinking about a couple as far as modifications for LED wise. I'm looking at maybe adding the LED strip. There's only really three areas you could do. I could probably put one right here underneath the control panel. Contemplating the one underneath the bezel. I mean, not the bezel, the marquee. Don't know if I'm gonna do that because maybe it'll look bad. And then the last one is maybe probably from the top. So there's not really much room for LED strip modifications to this. Um, Going to be working on definitely the speaker holes. I'm going to be adding more speaker holes to it. And as far as, again, the four um, menu keys for the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to be putting it on the face of it right here. There's really no other place that I could put it. I'm putting it right here, right on the bottom. I mean, other than that, modifying it, there's really not much you can modify. Uh, somebody has a marquee, a light up, a lit up marquee, but I think he kind of cut the wood out and then put his own kind of plexiglass to it. There's no way to light up this marquee. Um, other than that, that's really the only modification that I'll be doing is the LED buttons, the LED strip, and adding the four um, buttons for the controls. I already got it, the control panel unscrewed. Love it, able to just take it out, pull it out, that's easy. The main thing though is that when we do make when we do make the four buttons for the face, we do have to keep in mind that there is about, I would say, four inches to the control panel. So I have to make sure that the, the piece of wood that I'm gonna cut, not piece of wood that I'm gonna cut, the face plate that we're gonna use, we're gonna be cutting this apart. We're gonna measure and make sure that we clear at least the control panel edging. So it'll be cut basically from the middle down so we don't interfere with that at all. Other than that, Hopefully we get this done by today or tomorrow. This way we can sell it. So again, if you remember, we're gonna be looking at this right here, the control panel itself. Again, the one speaker, we're gonna be taking this, well, we're gonna be adding to it. We're gonna basically take this exact kind of design to it. We're gonna put it on here, but I haven't opened up the control panel yet. My only last thing really, and my only worry is about the coin select button. So I think I'm gonna be taking out this volume controller and the on and off switch and just making the coin buttons up here. I think that's the easiest way. I don't really want to put it inside the control, the, the face of it, like a coin. I don't really want to do that. Um, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't really know yet, but these are switches basically will not work unless I do a couple of research and find out how to make it work with the Pi. But for right now, let's open it and maybe we can find out what's wrong with my player one joystick. Got the control panel opened up. It's your basic, it's what you see on YouTube all day. Um, looking at my right, uh, player one right, the button is being triggered, so I'm not too sure why it wouldn't um, register on the um, on the actual game. Maybe it might be a software issue. I don't know. I'm not going to blame it. I don't know. But um, seems right. Solid um, soldering points on this. You do also see that they use like hot glue to make sure the wires don't move around in transit, which is pretty unique. Um, buttons and it's a joystick. So the control panel on this, the board on this. This won't be salvageable. You can't really use this for anything. There's no USB pin out for this, so. But they should have done. They, uh, I see it. I do see why they didn't add the second speaker, but in all honesty, you could have moved it up and you could have made it work. There should have been another, another speaker on this, but I don't know why they didn't add a second speaker. Don't know why, but we are gonna be taking a drill to this and we will make a second speaker to make it stereo sound on this. That's modification number one. I'll find out how to make that right now. But for right now, I think I'm just gonna take the buttons out and take out the joysticks. They even like glued or soldered in the screws. I don't know what this chemical is. It's a yellow thing. Might be like a Loctite for screws, I guess. I don't know. There you go. There's the control panel. I don't really know much about it. I don't really care for it. It's coming right out. Talk about real quick joy uh, buttons and the joysticks. Took out the button thinking I was gonna save it. Maybe I could use it for a future build. This isn't worth saving. Not at all. Um, no no nut to it. So that means that you do have to use the right size wood for this uh, to use this button. If you use anything bigger, you can use it. 
the micro switch on this is is tiny this is like if you abuse this it's gonna break i can imagine the parts inside of it is tiny joystick is very small i'm gonna break out the gaming solutions zippy joystick for this one definitely the bun the the screw holes won't line up on this but um this is all garbage uh this isn't this isn't worth it i was gonna like pop the switches out i'm just gonna take a blade to it and cut all these out because it's not worth it um I was hoping to see like a, a ground daisy chain that I could keep and salvage, but not really. Again, not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. That's how they build it. That's how they designed it. That was the cheapest way. The buttons are cheap. They're flimsy. But let's bring this thing to life. After about, I would say, five minutes of disassembling it, we do have the control panel free. Check out the buttons on this, right? The buttons have a groove. Like that basically held in the button so it didn't spin. I guess each button has this little groove on it. Very unique. I really hope that the trim, the trim should hide that. That should be an issue, the trim should hide it. Um, was looking at the on and off and the volume switch. I don't think I'm going to do my start and select there. I don't know, I still don't know yet. I'm up in the air on that. If you guys wanna suggest it, let me know what you guys suggest. It's just, it's gonna be dead, it won't work. Unless the, again, we're gonna be putting the Logitech PC um, desktop uh, speakers in this. If I could find a way to get the controller to fit in this, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll keep it. And then I could always look at how to program the Pi for an on and off switch. So I'm just gonna shoot this real quick. I'm not an expert at this. I just thought about this on the fly. I'm gonna show you guys real quick how I'm doing my speaker modification. So again, we do have the control panel here, all wired up. I basically took a piece of paper and I put some painter's tape on it right on the edge. Right on the edge and basically right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be punching holes through the piece of paper to mark the paper where the speaker holes so it matches and everything. So basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a flashlight, I'm gonna use my phone for now and I'm gonna flashlight down and basically just to see where the hole is I'm gonna look where the hole is. I'm gonna put my pencil right through the hole and we're gonna move the paper over. So that's how I'm starting this. In case anybody wants to see or learn how I'm doing my speaker thing, again, it's not professional. I'm just doing it the lazy way. It's gonna be quick and easy. Here we go. Got my flashlight down below, shining up. You can even see here. And I could see my holes here. This is gonna just take, you can take a pen or a pencil and basically we're just gonna push right through. So now real quick, I took the piece of paper, and this is very important, especially when it comes to drilling. I don't know, here it is. So I already did everything, so I'm kind of showing you the post map. But I took the piece of paper, I flipped the control panel over, put it here, just like this, to mimic it exactly like that. You have to put on top, you want to drill down. If you drill the opposite way, it will, it will screw up. If, you drill, if I flip this over and I drilled like this, the artwork on the other side would have definitely messed up. So you have to do it on the artwork side. If I'm gonna take a drill right now, which unfortunately I don't have a drill, so we're gonna to have to continue this tomorrow, but if I take a drill, I'm going drill, I'm drilling downwards this way. Did a punch down, took a punch down and I made all my holes, check it out. So yes, there's gonna be circles here. It's gonna cover up the wording, but in all honesty, I don't think anybody would mind it. Same exact, and it's gonna look exactly like this to the T. Speaker mod, baby. So we're back at it with the control panel, day two. Uh, I didn't get to finish yesterday. I'm wearing a different shirt now because I noticed that I didn't have number one, my drill. I didn't have a regular drill. And number two, I said, you know what? I didn't have my speakers yet. So I had to go to the store and get my speakers. So just now I drilled the control panel. The control panel now has set two identical speaker layouts. As you can see, when I screw down, I screw downward. So there is maybe a couple that the sticker does scratch, but you definitely want to go from this face down. Typically the back, that's what would happen if you did it the opposite way. So for example, that Street Fighter sticker would have came out. Original, double. That's it. 
far as the speaker setup on this one, we do go with a Logitech PC desktop type of speaker layout, 50 watts on this. They make another one that's 16 watts. It's really not that great. Um, this also has a subwoofer in it, so it's perfect. Uh, this right here, got a steel on it. It's considered open box, so I think I paid about 25 bucks. Micro Center and open box deals, always keep an eye on those because you save money that way. For this build, we are using a Logitech Z313, the 50 watt version. Just in case you wanted to see how you take off the speaker, you take a flathead to your silver trim right here. Your silver trim will then pop off. There's a couple of screws on the face you have to take off, and there's two screws on the bottom. Take a flathead and just pop it out. Now the hard part here is hopefully you know your wiring. You have to then take a, you gotta cut this. You cut this wire and then you have to reconnect it later on. So we're gonna do that right now. Again, left and right. 50 watts of power with the subwoofer going into the arcade one-up cabinet. Once you get all that gutted out, you're gonna be winding up with two speakers. I'm gonna be placing a run right there, one right there, dead in the middle. Um, this speaker right here on the left side, player one, might interfere with the joystick, but then again, there's so much room to play with this that there shouldn't be any issue. We are still gonna use also the speaker included in the arcade one-up. We're gonna put this somewhere maybe on the face of it to add more to the bass shake, actually the actual feel of the bass. Right now, we're almost done with the sound setup. Real quick, so before I do, before I wanted to put in the speaker, I did want to put the joystick in. Um, this way I can map out the left side speaker, because again, the one that we made, it was kind of getting close to the joystick. But real quick, just to show you, Game Room Solutions Zippy, zippy Joysticks, compared to Arcade 1-Up's joysticks, oh my God. Compared to RK one up joysticks, the Zippy is bigger, maybe about a half an inch bigger and wider. So yes, keep that in mind. So the holes, the four holes that come with RK one ups will not fit. You have to make brand new holes. So just keep that in mind. I have right now got player one joystick in, looks perfect. We're gonna do player two. I did use the same screws. Uh, I didn't really wanna do that, but I didn't have like less than an inch screw. So we're just gonna use them. But Again, still modding the arcade one-up cabinet. Well, that's really it for today, I guess. I'm gonna be taking home the control panel for the buttons, but but I basically got the speaker and the joysticks all in, connected. There you have it. Nice in. It's perfect. Enough room for the joysticks. Buttons should be perfectly fine. I did test them, and it looks like we do have to lean it over to the left side to block this notch. But other than that, rock study. And I did use all the same screws that were in the RK one up. So all these screws are holding in the joysticks and the speaker grill, I'm using the same exact screws. Uh, again, only because I don't have short enough screws. My minimum is like an inch. So I'm just using old hardware, but it works. We're gonna do the buttons tonight and hopefully we get everything wired up, ready to go tomorrow waiting on my LED strip, which should be coming in tomorrow. All right guys, so we're on day three of this build only because really I didn't have all my parts. I got all the parts in the mail, so I'm hopefully knocking this out today. Got home yesterday, put all my buttons in, got the Zinmo wired, everything's ready, and check this out. These will be my coin and select. So I did use the existing, the existing kind of hole for the volume controller and the on and off switch. Took those out, now we're ready to go. Um, next up, we're gonna do the four, um, the four buttons for the menus and all that. I'm breezing through this right now. So I went, got the control panel face. Got the face of this. This is why I tell you that whatever you, whenever you're using this, especially with the like MDF board, you have to drill on the face part that you wanna drill on. Because if you do push through, you mess it up. So this right now is really gonna be the, on the inside of the cabinet. So when I was doing this, I had my one and one eighth inch bit and I went downwards. Same thing when I did the control panel here for the buttons, I put the drill on this side, on the face. All the time, if you go on the opposite side, you will push through just like that. Imagine if the control panel came out like that, it would have been a disaster, would have had to scrap it. This right now, so far so good. Four admin buttons, we're almost there.